in the early 1980s, the KO University Gundam fan club, Gunsight One, decided to make their own animated series. After founding a studio and getting some distribution, they created the now legendary Super Dimension Fortress Macross, a series that would, in a roundabout way, become one of the most influential and widespread anime ever. Except, not really under that name. Crap damn, it... It might actually be over. Crap damn. Not to sound like an old fogey, but modern anime fans, you guys are really spoiled. Like, I, don't get me wrong, I enjoy being able to own all of my favorite giant mecha anime. I like the fact that I can turn on a streaming service and watch all six Urusei Yatsura movies in a row if I wanted to right now. It's really cool that when a new anime season starts up, I can look at what's coming out, and unless it's in Netflix jail, I can just watch everything the week it premieres. I'm up to date with My Hero Academia right now. I've seen the same episodes everyone in Japan did. That's great! But, before that, back in the dark times, before the internet, an era that we call the 80s. People sometimes have trouble guessing how old I am, and I get that. I don't exactly look my age, and I'm really happy about that. And on top of that, I grew up on other people's nostalgia. So, like, the things that people a few years older than me were really into were the things that I was into as a kid, almost more so than what was popular for people in my age bracket. At least until I was about 9 or 10 that I became a Pokemon Digimon kid. But before that, I grew up on other people's nostalgia. And it was honestly through that that I got into anime. And the main thing that got me into anime was, and I'm gonna get ready to get a lot of hate for this, it was a thing called Robotech. Robotech, for those who aren't aware, was a Frankenstein project that was taken up by a company called Harmony Gold in the 1980s. Harmony Gold's original plan was to pull a Star Blazers on the anime series Super Dimension Fortress Macross. Now, Star Blazers was a pretty excellent, and I'm saying that completely sincerely, English adaptation of the classic anime space battleship Yamato. In Star Blazers, they just removed a lot of the Japanese nationalism and futurized a bunch of the character names and made it so not everyone was named after a famous samurai. Perhaps even more importantly, the credits actually thank the original Japanese staff. This includes creator Nishizaki and the great Noboru Ishiguro. Unfortunately, that wouldn't be the fate for a lot of this Americanized Japanimation. See, Harmony Gold could see that the robot boom was coming, and they wanted to get in on it. They could smell that Voltron money. What if they just had a cartoon to sell action figures with? Macross was an excellent anime. It had a really powerful story, a lot of the same kind of things that were appealing about Star Blazers. But there was a problem. Macross is 36 episodes long. That's not enough to syndicate. Panicked, Harmony Gold initially was planning on doing a straight-to-video release, but instead decided they wanted to go a syndication method, and they came up with the best option that they could think of. Buy the rights to two other completely unrelated Japanese anime produced by the same studio, and to Frankenstein them together, pretending that each subsequent season was a different generation in the same timeline, 
and hoping that you would ignore the fact that you never see tech or characters ever again, even if not enough time had really passed that you just would never see them again. The result is the multi-generational epic Robotech, and I'm not gonna lie, I have to respect it for what it is. Yeah, it's an absolute machete job. There's no denying that a lot of the best parts of the original series got left on the cutting room floor, and some weird, weird translation took place. The worst example is in Macross. There's a thing called protoculture, which is what it sounds like. Uh, some, some Chariots of the Gods style BS about how all cultures across the universe, alien or and Earth, are all de derived from one prototype culture, a proto culture. Unfortunately, that didn't work well for Robotech, and instead of just renaming the protoculture to literally anything else, they kept the term, and what it was is never clearly stated until in Season 3, where protoculture just means battery that comes from a flower. The two other shows that made up Robotech, Super Dimension Cavalry Southern Cross and Genesis Climber Mospita, were mostly flashes in the pan. And while Mospita still has some pretty hardcore defenders to this day, Southern Cross wasn't so lucky. Despite how pro seemingly progressive it was for the time and the gorgeous animation, it just never really caught on. But Macross, on the other hand, had staying power. I understand that this is a lot, but you really have to bear with me because there's no simple version of this story. This thing is an absolute mess. But long story short, Carl Masek, the showrunner of Robotech and one of the main people for Harmony Gold at the time, was dead set on trying to franchiseify this Robotech. Especially since, again, this was the 80s. Giant robot cartoons and franchises built around them were just everywhere. Masick had something special on his hands, and he wanted to keep it going. And the plan at the time seemed at first to be to just keep buying other Japanese properties and calling it Robotech. As the mid-80s hit, Masick wanted to release Robotech the Movie, which was going to be made using footage from another OVA, very not-for-kids OVA, Megazone 2-3. Meanwhile, back in Japan, Shoji Kawamori, yeah, that Shoji Kawamori, as in Escaflone Shoji Kawamori, baby Shoji Kawamori, really made a name for himself with this Macross thing and he wanted to expand upon it a little more. He also started producing a movie. This gorgeous film, Macross Do You Remember Love, is a retelling of the events of the Macross TV series. And with Studio Nui working on it, and of course with Big West and Tatsunoko involved, they wanted to make sure there was no confusion. So they laid down a hard line for Mr. Masick. Yes, you might have bought the rights to this footage, but don't you dare tie this into Macross. We have our own Macross movie. While, meanwhile, it outside of Japan, this series is getting known as Robotech, Macross continued to thrive and flourish. And something kind of beautiful happened. The story kind of just kept growing. Macross wasn't just this little low-budget anime series from the early 80s. It was a mega hit. It rivaled Gundam. It had a beautiful movie adaptation. And by the late 80s, sequels started to get in the works. See, Harmony Gold had built this Robotech business model on a pretty simple idea, the hopes that no one would ever find out that there was a different source material that didn't match with their canon. This was relatively feasible in the pre-internet era, 
But as communication and the idea of Japanimation got bigger and bigger, it became more and more clear to Harmony Gold that putting that genie back in the bottle was impossible. To kind of add insult to injury, while Robotech mostly floundered, including Masek's attempt to make a fully newly animated season called Robotech 2 The Sentinels, of which only the pilot episodes were ever finished. Meanwhile, Macross was not just getting more buzz out, but the actual original product started circulating outside Japan. Various video distributors actually got the film rights to Macross Do You Remember Love and released it in several formats, although most of them were tapes with the admittedly extremely hard to watch Hong Kong dub included. I'd like to welcome you to my first concert. You can't imagine what a thrill it is. Thank you so much for coming. Ming Mei! Thank you. All right, I'll show you the correct way to approach a girl. Just watch Jet Jockey in action. Bad Hong Kong dub or not though, people really enjoyed this movie. And why not? It still has beautiful animation, beautiful music, and tells a really touching and relatable story. Plus, there's F-14s that turn into giant robots, and graphic ultraviolence. Unless you're watching the Clash of the Bionoids cut, in which case you were kind of shit out of luck. Uh, then, to add further insult to injury, the company U.S. Renditions picked up the distribution rights to Macross 2, an OVA that was produced while without Shoji Kawamori's blessing, still was related directly to the original Macross and not to Robotech. It was released in the U.S. with an English dub referencing Macross, which people who saw that tape of Do You Remember Love immediately understood as a direct continuation. And to add further insult to injury, Palladium Games, the board game and role-playing game company that Harmony Gold had partnered with for their Robotech RPG immediately bought the board game rights to Macross 2 and made not one, not two, but five, five role-playing books that were all compatible with their Robotech game. This was not great times for Harmony Gold. And as the 80s came to the end and Robotech boat mostly was seen as this interesting curiosity, it was clear that Macross was here to stay. And that left some people at Harmony Gold not especially happy. As time went on, it was clear to the still very niche anime home video crowd that there was a lot of demand for this Macross thing. The next Macross property, which actually was worked on by Shoji Kawamori, was the absolutely gorgeous Macross Plus, which also got a legitimate U.S. release. Not only did Macross Plus star a pre malcolm in the middle Brian Cranston, it also had a beautiful soundtrack by Yoko Kano, and it ran on Sci-Fi Channel. Like, you cannot get much more mainstream actual, easy-to-find anime than what Macross Plus was for a while. And this started irking the people at Harmony Gold. They wanted to start putting their foot down. Still having a cartoon made up of footage from the 80s, Harmony Gold tried getting the show back into circulation, and this was to mixed results. At one point in the early 90s, Another cartoon, this one produced in America, a serious cartoon about robot warfare called Exo Squad, came to the attention of Harmony Gold. They got into contact with Playmates Toys and basically contracted out the designs that they had for Robotech toys. And I'm literally saying the toys that they sold in the 80s sold those toy designs for an Exo Squad Robotech brand crossover. Nothing from Robotech, Macross, whatever you want to call it, actually appeared in the Exo Squad cartoon, but that didn't stop them from releasing a ton 
of Exo Squad branded toys with Robotech branding also on it. And Harmony Gold really wanted to put their foot down. It was bad enough that two of these Macross branded properties that were out that they didn't control. But some of these robots were owned by some other people, and that had to end. This is where we get into the part of Harmony Gold that they're probably most infamous for, or at least what I know people get the most pissed off about. So, shout out to my friends Gerald and Elliot, especially right now, who are probably seething waiting for me to get to this. Back in the 80s, buying Japanese properties to Americanize them wasn't just a selling cartoons game or even a selling Japanese action figures with an Americanized name game, it was also a, hey, we're trying to make this tabletop role-playing game and none of us are good at designing robots. I wonder if we can buy the rights to some pre-existing ones. See, a lot of anime properties, the different elements are sometimes sold under different copyrights. And it was under this logic that a company called FASA, or FASA, bought a bunch of designs from various mecha anime, including Crusher Joe, Dogrum, and yes, Macross, for their now legendary tabletop strategy game, Battletech. Harmony Gold really wanted to sell these Robotech robots that they thought they had the rights to, and they were not happy that someone else had completely legally also bought the rights to those robots. So Harmony Gold and Playmates took FASA to court. The details would make this video incredibly long, longer than this already is, and I can tell this is going to be longer than I wanted it to be, but suffice to say, FASA was forced to stop using the Macross robots, and a ton of these anime bots that appeared in Battletech then became known as the Unseen. They weren't officially part of the game anymore, but if you know people who are cool, they will still play with them at your local game cons. What followed as time went on got uglier and uglier. Harmony Gold wasn't actually producing anything new, but they were dead set on defending this Robotech thing. And maybe that genie was out of the bottle. Maybe people knew that Macross existed and that their thing was just a weird Americanization of it, but they were going to do everything in their power to stop it from going any further. On November 11th of the year 2000, an internet toy selling website called Valkyrie Exchange started receiving cease and desist orders from Harmony Gold demanding that they stop taking any pre-orders for Macross Plus toys. Various other websites were given similar cease and desist, told that they could no longer carry Macross branded items, only officially Harmony Gold signed off on Robotech product. This was the beginning of some pretty ugly times. Now, eventually, people at con booths and a lot of websites started realizing there was no good way for Harmony Gold to enforce this, but it was scary for a lot of these companies who were forced to take down lots of their Macross branded things and not sell them lest they face legal action from Harmony Gold. And as the 2000s started, Harmony Gold really started being famous for only three things. One, abortive attempts to restart Robotech, one way or the other. This included a movie where they fight robot torsos. An OVA from 1983 that they pretended was more Robotech. And a Kickstarter that was like watching a flaming train wreck that every time you thought it couldn't get worse, a car would explode. Thing number two. Suing people. Harmony Gold got super into this whole trying to sue people game. 
Um, this included releasing press releases saying that they have the exclusive rights to all things Macross, and then trying to sue Hasbro for having the gall to put a picture of an 80s Transformer on a con-exclusive toy box. See, said Transformer was a Macross Valkyrie that at the time Hasbro had bought the rights to and used to create the character Jetfire. This is also why Jetfire doesn't actually appear in the cartoon, and when a Jetfire analog, Skyfire, does show up, he looks absolutely nothing like the toy. So, like, my other favorite thing about that story is um, that lawsuit with Hasbro failed so miserably um, because it, it was not a strong argument. I mean, it was a picture of a toy that Hasbro made. What were they going to do? And not only did they fail, but the timing of them losing that lawsuit was extra beautiful because Hasbro was celebrating the 30th anniversary of Transformers at the time, and uh, they released a 30th anniversary brand new Jetfire figure. And he's totally just straight up a VF1J. Like, this is a victory lap. This is a beautiful plastic victory lap. I just, I can't. I can't. And of course, the last thing Harmony Gold continued to stay famous for, releasing Robotech on DVD again, and again, and again. Macross's original creator, Shoji Kawamori, was especially hurt by the fact that Harmony Gold continued to push on this Robotech thing. I don't understand, nor do I accept the fact that they took and modified my work without even asking. I cannot comprehend how a pirated version like this exists. However, I feel very fortunate that many other people from other countries around the world have been able to see Macross. I don't want to talk about it. Please support the official Macross release. Shoji Kawamori was very clearly heartbroken by what Harmony Gold was doing with his thing. But he was keeping the Macross train going. Not only had he produced a prequel OVA, but in the time since plus, Kawamori has produced three full Macross TV series in varying tones and length. And honestly, I'm happy that we have them. But wasn't that a weird thing that he said in there? Did you catch that? Why does a pirated version exist? Hold up. I thought Harmony Gold bought the rights to Macross. I mean, they're being dicks about it, right? But that doesn't mean they don't rightfully own the property. Oh boy. Here's where things get dicey and where we get to the news that hit last week. See, while Macross was indeed produced by Studio Nue, it was also produced by two other companies. Big West, a company that is still very much involved with the Macross property to this day, and Tatsunoko, a company you've probably heard of. Tatsunoko is a popular anime studio to this day. They produced Yatterman, Speed Racer, and Gatchaman. So, we're not talking light hitters, and they weren't new to the selling things to America game. And here's the thing, though. They sold those Macross rights to Harmony Gold. Big West and Studio Nue had nothing to do with it, and especially not Shoji Kawamori. This wasn't something Kawamori has ever been happy with. As far as he was concerned, this was done completely without his consent. And as the legal battles in Japan basically started to boil with such an iconic franchise as Macross and figuring out who all that money went to, it became uglier and uglier to even determine 
if Harmony Gold had any say over the Macross property. Now, that didn't stop them from pushing their weight around. That's literally the main thing Harmony Gold does. We, we just went through it, the three things. But it doesn't change the fact that their ownership of it was spurious at best, but was such a legal minefield, such a nightmare to try to navigate, it looked like no one was going to bother. Most recently, the official Macross Blu-rays, and keep in mind, we in the United States are in the same Blu-ray region with Japan. The Japanese Macross Blu-rays started including English subtitles. It kind of felt like Kawamori understood that there was a market for his product. It just wasn't entirely legal. And I'm not going to lie, I was even more heartbroken in 2019 when it was announced that Tatsunoko's license with Harmony Gold was actually extended. For the foreseeable future, they were going to have complete control on this franchise, a stranglehold, a pirating of the thing that Shoji Kawamori made without his permission. It seemed pretty hopeless for the Macross fans. Then last week happened? On April 9th of 2021, my Facebook and Twitter messages just blew up. See, my close friends know that I love Macross, and... While I despise Harmony Gold to the bottom of my being, I can't hate Robotech. I wouldn't have discovered anime had I not seen it. So, it came as a massive shock to me when a press release came out that Studio Nue, Big West, and Harmony Gold had come to an agreement. They were no longer at odds with each other, and that, and I'm quoting here, most of the Macross franchise would see release worldwide. This is huge news. I, Again, just the history that I gave you is relatively rushed. There's so much insanity to this story, I'm kind of shocked that it's moving forward, but here we are. The Macross franchise is getting a proper release worldwide. And a lot of people just jumped onto that and how crazy it is that Harmony Gold is working with uh, Studio Nue and Big West. How did the, like, oh my gosh, what will this entail? But there's a couple things in that press release, as exciting as it is, that I really want to point out that I find really interesting. For starters, the press release specifically says most Macross properties are going to get released worldwide. Now, I'm not entirely certain what that entails. That might not even mean physical media distribution, though I desperately, desperately hope it does. But there are some things that I'm going to be skeptical over. Macross 7, in its glorious insanity, has some pretty crazy music rights tied up with it. So getting the distribution rights for that, at least paying for the music, would be prohibitively expensive for a lot of studios. So I'm not sure what their workaround would be for something like that. And then there's that movie I mentioned before. So Macross Do You Remember Love, like I mentioned earlier, had a illegal worldwide distribution on VHS tape. This tape that I'm holding right now is a completely legitimate release. However, it was not done by a big name company. It was done by a relatively shady company that did I mention they used the Hong Kong dub? They used the Hong Kong dub. <laughs> You've been drinking. So what? You can still fight when you're drunk. 
who even owns the home video rights to this thing is kind of up in the air and is another sordid legal affair that no one seems to have any very good leads on and I'm very worried about. So, uh, let's just say I'm happy that I have the Japanese Blu-ray of that bad boy. That said, I'm ecstatic about getting the rest of these Macross properties over here. But I also found a couple other things in the press release really interesting, and I kind of want to highlight them just to point them out. This line here really stuck out to me, and I just want to point it out. Tatsunoko did not have the rights to license Macross, including sequel rights, to Harmony Gold, but that Big West owns the franchise, including the rights to 41 original series designs. This allowed Harmony Gold to release the original Macross anime internationally and develop its own Robotech sequels, but did not extend the license to subsequent Macross media, which is quite contrary to what Harmony Gold has been claiming over the years. The other thing that I thought really stuck out, though, in the press release was a specific thing saying that Big West and Nue can't get involved in or, I guess, detract from the Harmony Gold pre-release process of their live-action Robotech movie, a thing that they have been saying that they've been doing since around 2007 and they haven't made any real progress on. And I can't help but wonder, with Harmony Gold getting so much spotlight, I there wasn't really a whole lot of news of the Japanese side of things being a pain in their rear about making that live-action movie, but for all we know, that might have been an issue. This news does seem like a big win, and it's hard to say what things are going to look like in the future, and we don't know yet. But... As I see it, there's only one party that walked away from this and not losing anything. Yeah, Tatsunoko probably felt a little awkward about the whole them never actually having the rights to sell those Macross properties, but they're still making money off Harmony Gold. And they were making good enough money that they extended that contract. So, they're walking out of this fine. Harmony Gold, on the other hand, basically has to ignore their business policy of almost three decades of hoping people will just ignore the original version of that thing they Americanized. And having to have to own up to the fact that they didn't really create that much of this mythos. Meanwhile, the Big West people, and especially Kawamori, get the win that they can continue releasing Macross and maybe get some legal releases in the U.S., but they also can't get in the way of Harmony Gold working on their stupid live-action Robotech movie, which... <laughs> I'm kind of excited to see where this goes. Uh, Lawrence Kasdan was briefly attached. I don't know how long that lasted, though. I don't think they have a lot of money. However you look at this, I feel like it is too soon to say that it's a good thing or a bad thing yet. But it is an interesting thing. And I'm glad that I was able to look at it and kind of report on it. Um, yeah, this has been a long, ugly road, and I can't emphasize this enough. I don't support Harmony Gold. I don't like Harmony Gold, and I prefer that they go away forever. But if I hadn't seen Robotech, I wouldn't have the deep, abiding love that I have for anime now. I probably wouldn't be a Gundam fan, and I sure as hell wouldn't be a Macross fan, and... That doesn't sound fun at all. So... I'm always going to be thankful for Robotech. But I'd be lying if I said that 
I'm not immensely pleased to finally see Harmony Gold get put in their frickin' place. As always, if you folks have any questions, if you learned something today, perhaps, or if you just want to tell me what a colossal piece of garbage I am for liking Robotech when I didn't know there was anything else available, feel free to head down to that comment section. Any engagement is good engagement. Remember to hit that like and maybe subscribe if you want to hear more anime history, takes on nerd news, or just talk about mecha anime and other good nerdy stuff. And as always, Kyun Kyun, Kyun Kyun, keep on sparking in the free world.